Hi, it's Terry Vanover. Hi, it's Terry Vanover, and I'm a divorce strategist. I help you come through divorce without being legally, financially, and emotionally devastated. But just as importantly, I help you to heal from unhealthy relationships or toxic marriages so that you can transition confidently into the next phase of your life and so that you can find a happy, healthy, new relationship. So I'm hoping that we're live on Facebook. It still says prepping, prepping, prepping. And um, I am recording. So if you don't see this live, you're gonna get the replay today. But we're gonna be talking about two topics. So the first is how to survive the holidays, right? If you're going through divorce, holidays may not be a happy time for you. So I'm going to give you some strategies on how to get through this difficult time. And then the second thing we're going to be talking about is how to set up healthy boundaries, how to say no without hurting someone's feelings. Someone, one of our members had asked me, hey T, um, there's someone who is asking me to do a project, but she's becoming very flirtatious, right? And um, I don't know how to like tell her to back off without hurting her feelings. So I'm going to go over that, right? So let's talk about that because I know a lot of you are people pleasers that are afraid to hurt someone's feelings. And I think it's really, really important that we address that because in order to be authentic to yourself, until you can learn to say no and, and understand you know, how to do that in a way that is kind and authentic to you, but also understand that really when you say no and you put up the boundaries, you're actually honoring the other person as well for many reasons. So, you know, here's the thing. When, when you say no to someone or you put up the boundaries, you are honoring them because I want you to think about that, right? If you've been dating someone and you're afraid to hurt their feelings, so you keep going out with that person, you keep going out with them, you keep going out with them, you're actually stringing them along and you're actually doing that person a disservice in the long run. You know, have you ever been through that where someone has, you know, talked to you and like kept you along and along, kept you thinking that they were interested in you and all along they weren't. I mean, you're actually a little more pissed about that. Like, well, why didn't you tell me earlier rather than, you know, just rip the bandaid on and let me go on my merry way, right? So I don't get it at that. I'd rather be told straightforward and told, you know, how do I, you know, I, I'd rather just be told just let me go. Don't, don't keep stringing me along. I'd rather just move on to someone who does want to be with me, right? So yeah, it might initially hurt, but at least like they can get over that hurt and they can move on. So think of it that way. So in this case, you know, this member was asking, someone had asked him to do a project, but she had, was now crossing the line and becoming very flirtatious and he's not interested. And he said, well, how do I tell her no without hurting her feelings. Well, here's the truth. You can't. Like, you are not responsible for someone else's feelings. You can try to communicate your boundaries in a way that honors that person. So own your own feelings. I'm not comfortable moving our friendship to something else. I want to keep this as just a platonic friendship. Or, I just want to keep this as just us working on this project and nothing more. That's really an honorable way of saying that and owning your own feelings. So, you know, the first step in creating healthy boundaries is making sure that you are very, very clear in what those boundaries are. So I always tell everyone, you have to define what your boundaries are. And I mean, really, really get crystal clear. What are your negotiables? What are your non-negotiables? What, what are your time, you know, anything, like how much time do you want to spend with that person? What are the expectations in this, bound, uh, in this relationship? You have to get really crystal clear on your boundaries. And then it's important that you communicate those boundaries in an authentic and, and kind way. It doesn't have 
to be, you don't have to be shitty about it. You can be kind, you can be firm and take ownership of your own feelings. I want this, this, and this, you know, it, you don't have to put the other person down or say anything about the other person. I'm just, you know, not comfortable in dating at this point in my life. I prefer this, or I need this in my life in a relationship. Wish you all the best, you know? So you have to define what your boundaries are and communicate what they are. So it's really, really important that you take some time, learn who you are, learn what your needs are, learn what your desires are and, and what you want and don't want in yourself and in a partner. That's why, you know, when people say, um, don't just jump into another relationship, that's what they mean. It's not that you're trying to restrict you, but it's about learning who you are and learning your needs. Because if you've, if you've gotten lost in a relationship, if you've been married for 20, 30 years, you might have to take some time and rediscover yourself again. And so in order to communicate what your needs are, you have to know them yourself. And sometimes we've got lost our identity in the divorce process and you have to learn who you are again. And that actually is what divorce professionals mean and relationship professionals mean when they say date yourself. That's really what they're saying. I, it's a cliche term and I think most people don't understand what it means. When we say to date yourself after a divorce, what we're saying is to treat yourself the way you want someone else to treat you. Learn who you are again. Get back your own identity. So, you know, you want to go to that fancy new restaurant? Take yourself out to that fancy new restaurant. You want to, um, you know, go on that trip you always wanted to go on? Go take that trip. Go do it. Like, date yourself really means learn, your, learn about yourself. Because when you're dating, that's what you're doing, right? You're learning about the other person, learning about their dreams, their desires, their needs. So that's what you need to do to yourself. And so, you know, you heard my story. I went through a devastating divorce. I, two and a half years of failed mediations, two attorneys, just courtroom drama, like a lot, you know, of money wasted. And um, a lot of mistakes, you know, the way I communicated with my ex, the way he communicated with me, like there were a lot of mistakes that were made during my divorce. And when I got out of it, I said, oh my God, I, I don't know who that woman was. <laughs> there has to be a better way. And I decided I wanted to help other people through this time and come through it better and learn the tools and the strategies and the resources that they need so that they can come through this more amicably, so that they can communicate better, so that they could, could avoid the mistakes that so many people make when they're going through, through divorce. Because I think the number one mistake that people make, I know I was, I, you know, I don't know if I was making it as much as my ex-husband was making it. And if I could see it now, I see it now, hindsight is 2020, but that people often use the legal process to try to get emotional justice. That's the number one mistake that people make. So if you understand like the legal process is for dividing assets and coming up with parenting time, it's not for punishing your partner. It's not for, you know, doing this, this, and this, and look at what you're entitled to and what you're most likely going to get and what you're most likely not going to get. Learn what to fight for and what not to fight for. You'll be so much better off. So, you know, I went through that and now I help people, you know, to learn how to come through this better, how to co-parent more effectively, how to let go of the betrayal trauma, how to heal your heart from this, how to understand how maybe your own abandonment issues, your own childhood traumas were impacting your marriage and what to do about it and how you can heal from that so that you can go on have a happy, healthy new relationship. And so I give people the tools that they need to move forward, right? Um, I was talking about how one of my clients, you know, he's really struggling with the feeling of powerlessness. And, you know, that's been a theme in my own life, uh, sexually abused and abandoned, feeling powerless. 
huge thing for me. And divorce really triggers those kind of feelings that we have. And so the process itself, the legal process, really leaves you feeling so powerless. And so, you know, I was talking, you know, with him this week about how can we get your, your power back? So that's going to lead me to this next part, right? I've now moved on to where, you know, I'm partying with my, my ex-husband. He comes over to celebrate my youngest daughter's birthday with us and Thanksgiving. We have holidays together. It's just easier than the mess of going back and forth. It's always like, oh my God, whatever. We don't have family around here. Let's just celebrate Thanksgiving together. It'll make it easy when you've got, you know, Dee cooking her fabulous deli d dishes and me watching her cook her fabulous <laughs> dishes. I'm not much of a cook. So yay. Um, so it works out. Everybody, you know, has a good time. So so much better that we have this great co-parenting relationship and we've learned how to put our past behind us. And so, but you know, you have to get past your own issues before you can get to this place, you know? And so, you know, let's talk about self-care and what it means, especially during the holidays. I separated the day after Thanksgiving or right after Thanksgiving holiday or something. And that first holiday was miserable the the most miserable of my life for sure and and then i lost my mom like pretty soon after the holidays and it was just like one heartache after the other and you know i was talking with a client recently and we were talking about loneliness and the sh and also just like how lonely is like it's physically it, it's like physical you're so lonely and so heartbroken that like you physically are struggling like you can hardly breathe you're in pain and like i i know that i know that loneliness on an intimate level and so during this time like being away from your kids right at least your kids being near you you know gives you that love and that comfort i mean i remember sitting in the bed like lying in that bed with my kids with me they were real little at that time just crying myself to sleep holding them just ugh. It, it was, it was, it was devastating. And so I know how difficult the holidays can be. I've been there. And so I want to talk about how to, to get through this. And you might not have your kids with you this Christmas or this Hanukkah, right? So you want to know, like, what can I do? I'm so lonely. I'm, I don't think I can get through this. So one of the things is self-care. Now, I want to talk about what I mean about self-care. Someone had asked, what is self-care? And especially for women, especially, there's this romanticized notion that it's about bubble baths and reading books. And I'm like, that is not self-care. Um, that's an escape. <laughs> and for many of us single parents, like, whatever, we're lucky if we get to go, you know, pee in the, the toilet for 10 seconds by ourselves. So. Let's be realistic about what self-care is. And so my client and I this week, we were talking about, you know, cause he's really struggling with December. December is a horrible like month for him. Not just, you know, with the, the divorce, even pre-divorce, he said, you know, it's just, you know, I already knew this was coming. And so we were talking about strategizing about self-care, but when we talk about self-care, what I really mean to talk about is like, how do you ground yourself during this time? How do you release the anxiety that comes up for you? How do you feel grounded? What brings you to a state of grounding? So that's what I mean when I talk about finding your self-care. Now for me, meditation. And if you are not practicing meditation, you are missing out. I would be, you know, <laughs> I was telling, I, I tell you what I was saying, y'all know I had that dental um, thing a couple of weeks ago. And um, I was meditating during the dental procedure and the, the hygienist um, asked me like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Give me, and I gave her some tools, some apps for her to use. And I went back for a checkup and she said, I, you know, I've been using it. And I was like, okay. So meditation for me is my grounding technique. Uh, working out. I love to work out. I love it on vacation. Like, woohoo, I get more time like to work out because for me, 
it grounds me, it releases those endorphins, it makes me a much better mom, more patient, more kind, just grounds me. Especially when I get to exercise outside, when I get to run in nature, I love going to um, hiking and I love getting in the woods, I love all that stuff, it's very helpful for me. So what is it that brings you to a grounding place? What is it that, that keeps you centered, keeps you focused, keeps you in the here and now? It may be spending some time reading a book. It may be setting an intention for one of my clients. We were talking earlier this week and she was like, you know what, I need to set out my morning intention. And I was like, good, okay, make it routine. If you know it keeps you grounded, if you know it, you know, takes away the anxiety, make sure make that a practice be consistent in it so what is it that keeps you grounded you know and i know that kids are a good distraction and they can help ground you to a certain extent but if your kids aren't around that that's going to be a false crutch for you right so what can you do to keep yourself grounded this holiday season so that's one of the tips that we're going to be talking about on our workshop this upcoming week on December 12th, we are going to be doing a workshop on how to, to get through the holidays, how to cope with the loneliness, how to manage your new normal, how to handle the loneliness. So it's December 12th at 10 a.m. Central time. So please make sure that you're here with us because we're going to be giving you more strategies. We're going to have some coaching, live coaching, it's going to be, um, you know, lots of support there. It's going to be um, a group where, you know, we can have some discussion, where we can share tips, where we can talk about our experiences. So please make sure that you're joining us on that if you haven't signed up, because it's going to be a really wonderful time for you to connect with other people who understand what you're going through, right? Nobody understands that lonely ache in your heart and like falling asleep, holding your children in your bed, going through a divorce, like, like another divorced person, right? So please make sure that you join us so we can talk together and share tips. And there's gonna be some strategies on how to cope with this and how to get through this time. So join me on December 12th, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, you need anything, you know, reach out to me or the admins and we're happy to help you through it. Okay. The information is on the link below. So check it out and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.